Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kristen, the maker behind Do So Knits. And Do So Knits is my channel where I share with you guys how knitting has interwoven into my life and some other fiber crafts as well here and there every now and again. Thank you so much for coming back today. This is my first podcast episode of 2023. I'm excited to be back. I've done some other videos since the last video. We've done a vlog. We've announced our Patreon. I've done a video about my Ravelry queue, but today is back to the basics. It's a podcast episode, so I'm going to be showing you all the projects I'm working on, talk about some of my future plans, and maybe some other things. We'll see what else comes up throughout the episode. So I hope you have something cozy to drink. I am drinking a baby spice tea, which is a tea from Bird and Blend in my Summer Sock Camp mug. I love this mug because it's one of those campfire mugs with the speckles on it. One of my favorites, and it's like an olive green, so my favorite color. So this is one of my favorite teas. It's just It just feels like fall in a cup. It's just warm and cozy and... It's a little cloudy and dreary outside today, so channeling some warm and cozy is the vibes I want to bring to this podcast today. If you're comfortable, we can go ahead and dive into what I've been working on. Since I've done a couple of videos in between my podcast, and especially since my vlog was finishing up projects before coming into 2023, I really don't have many new finished objects today. The only things I have finished since my previous episode I feel like I've talked about in other formats. I've shown my muscle bra and my advent socks on my 2022 recap video and I showed Shane's Montrealer there as well and those were really the projects that I finished so I didn't want to go into much detail over them again today. If you would like to see more of them just make sure you check out that week of knitting vlog and my 2022 recap video. I show all those projects in that. And so today I really just want to show you what projects I've been working on since the new year started and some plans that I have. So over the last couple weeks, because today is the 15th, so we're about two weeks into the new year, I've really been pretty focused on projects. I usually every week kind of do like a planning kind of thing in my journal. I'm trying to do it a little more digitally now. And I like write down all the works in progress that I have and anything that I want to start, anything I want to finish, kind of write all of that down. And this past week, I wrote all my projects down. And even though I had five to seven projects, works in progress, not including blankets, I really wanted to focus on two, and that's really what I've been working on these last couple weeks. I have a little more to show you, but I've had two really main projects. So the first thing that I've really been working on are my Desert Vista Dye Works socks that I am knitting for January. Now I've explained a ton about the Desert Vista Dye Works knit along. I link to the forum down below if you're interested in joining, but basically I knit a pair of socks every month using Desert Vista Dye Works yarn. And so for this month, I am using the colorway Unicorn Frap. It is a bright pink, blue, and like a speckly white. Um, I bought this yarn not because the colors really call to me, but I used to work at Starbucks when the Unicorn Frappuccino came out. And I just have many memories attached to the Unicorn Frappuccino in the fact that the Starbucks that I worked at did not have a drive through but we were across the street from a middle school. And so we'd always get this rush of kids when the school let out and they'd always come and get waters. Always waters and we would prep like 25 to like 50 waters for these middle schoolers because they would just come in and ask for water. That's it. Never order drinks. And then they would just like walk home. But when the unicorn frappuccino came out, oh my gosh, we made so many unicorn frappuccinos. It was a non-stop like queue of them and you learn at Starbucks like how to like batch drinks especially when you're making like two of the same thing in a row. We made like 20 of these at a time and it was this frappuccino which already takes so many extra steps compared to other drinks 
and you had to put this powder in to make it the fluorescent blue or the fluorescent pink and then you had this blue squeezy gel that was sour and honestly the squeezy gel was really nice like if you ever ate like warheads or if you just liked sour candy um that sour gel was actually pretty good uh, but you had to like line the gel into the cup and then use powder to make it like fluorescently plink and then there was like extra powder on the top. There was just a ton with that unicorn frappuccino and so I bought this colorway because I just have memories of making that drink and it's probably a good thing Starbucks didn't bring it back. It didn't taste very good. It was all for the looks. That was one of those drinks that was a look. <laughs> anyway, I'm knitting a pair of socks this month for my mom. One of my goals in 2023 is to make more gift knits and I have a lot of socks for myself already so um, also these aren't really my colors but I feel like my mom would like them a lot. So I did three colors for the cuff. I cast on at a color change so that's like kind of a half color. Three colors and then I did four colors for the leg. I did a German short row heel with a mini heel flap adjustment 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 and that is something I use from Mina's vanilla sock recipe it's just a way to add like a mini heel flap above your German short row heel and then a foot to fit her foot and then I just did the wedge toe on these so I have finished the first sock and I am working on the second I just cast on this morning actually I cast on these last night at dinner but worked through the cuff this morning so now these are pretty good to be on the go and like I said this has been a pretty like focus project over the last couple weeks I just am trying to not procrastinate my Desert Vista Dye Works socks to like the last week of the month so I finished one starting the second and the reason I'm doing a shorter leg is the minimum leg length for the Desert Vista Dye Works is a three inch leg. So that is what I have. And my mom lives in North Carolina, so she doesn't really have a need for a ton of tall socks. However, she does wear the socks I've made her and these, the three inch leg is like my favorite short sock. It's just, I think it hits your ankle pretty perfectly. I love the length, it's fun to knit. So yeah, done that for her, starting the second one. And yeah, been enjoying these. And then I just wanted to do a little recap on another sock that I've worked on. I started these in December and they were mentioned in my wrapping up 2022 video. And these are my candy cane stripe socks that I'm knitting for my husband Shane. So I put these on these Bryce spun blockers that I've gotten from Webs. These are a size medium. I finished the first sock. I think I need to get large blockers though because if you see, like there's a little extra here and they're not super tight. Maybe that's okay on the camera. I think they look still cute. But it's just a self-striping, not really self-striping, self-patterning yarn from Regia. And if you can't tell, they're very holiday, very Christmassy. So this is the label. And Regia is a 75% virgin wool, a 25% polymede, and I've knit these for Shane. I did a longer leg than I normally do on these. I did 20-ish rounds for the cuff, a pretty long leg. I just did three repeats of this, like, red stripe, and then I started the heel after this red stripe. Did a German short row heel because they fit him really well. Foot to fit his leg. And then on these, I did the wedge toe. Really enjoyed these. I took these when we went to Avatar. I knit most of the leg during that three and a half hour long movie. And then I've just been picking them up every now and again with no real plans on when I will finish them. This blocker is definitely shorter than the toe because this is, all of this is just not on the blocker. I might have to get large blockers for him, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time this morning. I kitchenered both the toes on that unicorn frappuccino sock and this sock today. It's actually been ready to get be kitchenered for 
like a week, which is like just seaming up the toe. But I wanted to do that this morning, and then this morning I also cast on the next sock because I want to move these socks to car knitting. I have no real plan of when I want to finish them now because they are very Christmas and holiday December themed. And if you don't know, it's January. <laughs> more if you're watching this much in the future, not in real time. It's January now and I just don't feel inspired to finish these at the current point in time. And I don't have any emergency car knitting. Emergency car knitting for me is just simple projects that I just leave in the car in case I ever go somewhere and we have to wait in line or wait for food, wait for anything. And I don't have any other projects that are like ready to be on the go or say I forgot to bring one my emergency car knitting. So I've started the cuff on these. I might try to finish the cuff today, but basically these are moving to emergency car knitting. And yeah, I'm using a US Zero for both of the socks, nine inch circulars. And for my mom's socks, I did 60 stitches. And for these, I'm doing 64 for Shane. Honestly, I don't know why I cast on 64. 60 usually fits Shane better. I just must not have been thinking when we went to Avatar. I started the cuff like the morning before we went to the movie. So I was kind of rushing to get it on and in a place for the movie. So these might be a little big. We'll see. The Regia yarn that I've used for previous socks for him have held up really well. They're probably some of his most well-worn socks. They've just lasted really well. So I'm excited to use some of my German Regia stash because I do really love working with that yarn. It's definitely more like toothy and grippy compared to like a Merino, which is what I'm using for my Desert Vista Dye Work socks, but they hold up and wash and wear so well. Probably better than the Merino socks do. Not digging on Merino socks. I have mostly Merino socks. I have tons of merino socks, but the Regia just has like a nice feel to them. So then on to my next project that has been really my focus the last couple weeks. So I finished Shane's Montrealer on New Year's Day. Basically, I finished it New Year's Eve. I just had some seaming to do on New Year's Day. But after that, I've been wanting to start a sweater for myself, and so I did. I have started the Forager sweater by Melody Hoffman. This is a worsted weight sweater held with a mohair and it's written and has sizes for a 39.2 inch bust up to a 62.4 inch bust with a two to five inches of ease. I started this sweater for myself. I'm putting this in the bougie sweatshirt cowl hosted by Young Folk Knits because this does feel like a bougie sweatshirt and I really hope it does. So it's just a classic raglan sweater and I'm holding Cascade 220, not Superwash, in the color Turtle. And I'm holding Knit Picks Aloft, which is a Super Kid mohair and silk blend. And this is the colorway Labyrinth. So it's just like this really rich green and I'm holding them together. And when you look at them separate, I was a little bit worried. And you might be worried if you haven't seen this yet, like, cause this is a, they're very different colors. And I didn't know how they were gonna play together. Um, I did a swatch and it's amazing. So I cast on the sweater and I divided for the sleeves yesterday. And guys, I cannot be more stoked. So this is my sweater so far. Look at that color. Then that's pretty true. It might be blowing out just a smidge, but I love this sweater. So it just has like this really gorgeous jewel tone kind of marling effect that's happening. It's not like 100% in some places. In some places you can see more of that like dark, more mohair comes through than others. It's just gorgeous. I love this sweater. So I'm holding that worsted weight and the mohair together. It's been going really, really well, but I have made some modifications to this sweater. 
and let's dive into them. So this pattern has a gauge of 20 stitches per inch or 20 stitches over four inches. I have 19 stitches over four inches. So I am knitting the size five in this sweater, which is a 44.4 inch bust. And with my gauge, that 44.4 should be about a 46.7, which falls into that two to five inches of ease. I'm basing that off of my upper bust measurement. So my upper bust is a 42 and a half. So 42 and a half to 46.7 is about four and a half inches. So I'm in that ease range. Amazing. My bust is bigger than 46.7 inches. My bust is about 48 inches. So basically I'm having to add bust arts because my bust is about a 48 and this is going to end up being 46.7. So I've added bust arts to the pattern. My reference for adding bust arts is I went to this workshop with Vogue Knitting Live with Kim McBryant Evans about adding horizontal and vertical bust arts. When you walk away from that class, you get like a really nice worksheet, which is really amazing. You can just like plug in your measurements and it kind of helps you do some of the math. Some of it's still kind of elusive to me, but basically what I'm doing is because I have four inches of ease at my upper bust, I want four inches of ease at my full bust. And I have this page in my little notebook where I did all this math. But basically, by adding four inches, I want to add 20 stitches total to add four extra inches of fabric at my bust. So I'm adding 10 stitches on each side, one for each boob. <laughs> and I figured out my row gauge from my upper bust to my apex of my bust. I have five inches to increase those 20 stitches. So just dividing your row gauge by your increase rate, you can kind of figure it out. I'm not explaining how to do bust starts really well, but there are tons of tutorials and information online. The type of bust starts I'm doing in this sweater are called vertical bust starts. And so for vertical bust starts, I just increase on this side and this side every so many rows. That's how I know, because I started at my upper bust up to my full bust, I increase in that span the 10 stitches per side. And I just do it at about a quarter in on each of the front panels. There's also horizontal bust starts, which is when you do short rows. So vertical bust starts typically add more fabric at your apex. So more, literally just more fabric around your bust. So basically it starts small, goes wide, and I'm decreasing after my bust. Horizontal bust starts end up adding more fabric to help accommodate like the lifting that happens when you have a fuller bust. So you just add more fabric across the front to help just have a little bit more versus the back so that it evens out. I find vertical bust starts a little easier to figure out the math with. And if you have like a pattern, I've found it a little bit easier. I'm still very new to adding bust starts to patterns. I highly recommend the Kim McBrien Evans class with Vogue Knitting Live. I still think she does it pretty often. The class was called Boob Camp, the first session, and I really loved it. The worksheet that you come out with that is very helpful in figuring out the math, so I do like that. But when I was searching, because I was still researching, seeing if I want to do horizontal or vertical, there's tons of resources online of people who kind of tell you how to do the math. Yeah, so I'm adding bust starts to this sweater, and I did it, and I think it fits really, really well. I'm pretty excited by it. But another reference I wanted to give is in this Interweave Knits issue. This is the winter 2023 issue, so I've seen Interweave Knits at, like, Barnes & Noble, and I actually found them originally on my library's like free online resources. I think with Hoopla and with the RB Digital, I was able to access basically all issues of Interweave Knits. So definitely check if your library has these available electronically. But in the winter 23 issue, there's actually a whole 
article by Kim McBrien Evans about fitting sweaters. And so in this article, she talks about like taking your measurements and basing your measurements off of your upper bust, how to add, if you need to add bust starts, what that commonly looks like. Normally it's if your upper bust and your full bust, if there's a, more than a two inch difference, you probably need to add bust starts in a sweater, depending on the ease. But also something I find very helpful in this is there's a chart in this about recommended eases for different types of sweaters, which I feel like is something that's really hard to find. So for example, for a raglan sweater, the typical ease is about two to four inches, but it goes to tell you like different sleeve eases, what, how much ease you normally find at a waist, how much you would want at your hip, how much at your bicep, and the amount you want at your wrist as well. So all that information, and then on here as well is like a little chart about finding your size based on a schematic. Because in a pattern, for example, in this, it's saying for the upper torso, she'd probably knit a size four or five. For the front, she would need to knit a size five and add bust starts. And then once she gets to her hips, she needs to be about a size seven instead of a size five. So then knowing that, okay, from my waist to my hips, I need to increase two different sizes. You can look at the two stitch counts for those different areas of the pattern and then figure out some increases based on how far your waist and hips are apart. But I looked on Kim McBrien's website before starting recording and she does have this really great schematic about like taking your body measurements and then like looking at that to help pick sizes from a schematic. Highly recommend this resource. This article is a really great read. If you can find this interweave knits issue or borrow it from your library, I highly recommend that article and like digesting that to get some really great information. And there's also a QR code sent you to some digital resources about finding your size with a schematic. This article doesn't have the information about how to actually do bust starts, but if you can figure out how much ease you want to add at your bust, based on the information she gives you here, which is basically figure out the difference from your upper bust to your full bust, figure out how much fabric that equates to per stitches, and then you can figure out how to do the bust starts with free resources online or by taking that class. I feel like that was a very, very roundabout way of explaining how I do bust starts. It's something I'm still figuring out and something I need to incorporate more into my sweaters. I definitely get lazy. It's so much easier to just be like, great, my bust is a 48. I'm just gonna knit whatever I need to. Okay, we have the dog. I was like, I'm definitely a little bit lazy. It's really easy to just be like, okay, my bust is a 48. I'm just gonna do whatever size I need to do based on my full bust. But the thing is, is like, I'm not a two inch difference from my upper bust to my full bust, which is what most people are designing with. So I really need to do that math to make sure that it fits up here on my shoulders and my upper chest and I can just add some extra fabric for my bust. I also have this same struggle with sewing the little, the, some of the garments, especially tops that I've sewn. I usually have to change or modify or add bust starts. So, and I'm still not perfect with that either. So it's definitely a, a journey that I'm going on this year with knitting more sweaters. Um, I just don't want to like explain completely the math because it was a paid for class. And so all the formulas that she gives, like she taught them in the class, there are resources online, but I highly recommend that class if you want more of like a formula plug and play, if you don't wanna try to figure out the math yourself, cause it's hard, it's hard. And I wish there were more resources for adding bust starts and knitting. If you have more resources for adding bust starts and knitting, I would love to have them. Please leave them in the comments below. I, if I get enough information, I'd love to just do another video about bus starts and knitting and resources for that. Because I feel like right now you're kind of at the whim of either 
I had to take a class to learn this skill because it's hard to find exactly how to do it for free on the internet. And so it's that, or you're relying on a designer pattern that they've done the math for the bust arts for you, which isn't included in every sweater pattern out there. So if I want to knit this forager pattern because it's the perfect raglan sweater, worsted weight with a mohair, but it doesn't have bust starts, so I don't want that necessarily to deter me from not knitting the sweater. So it's a skill I want to learn. It's a skill I'm working on. If you have more resources, let me know. I'd love to be able to share them. Right now it's hard because I want to exp explain how to do it, but I don't want to give away paid for information. But I think it's information that a lot of people really want to have and want to know how to do. So let me know what you know. I've let you know what I know. And let's see if we can figure out these bus starts together. I'm sorry this was such a ramble. I hope it made sense. It probably didn't make sense. There's more specific numbers on my project page because I had to leave it there for myself. So anyway, this is my forager sweater. I added bus starts to it. It's a bit of a story. I'm figuring that out this year. More bus starts to come. And I'm so happy with this sweater. The mohair and the worsted weight combined just make the most gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next project. So if you saw in December, I was working on my anthology throw and uh, I frogged it. I frogged it during my week of knitting video. That's when I frogged it. And I actually started a new project with those mini skeins. So I started the Calico Quilt Shawl, which is by Samantha Troia, but it's a Calico Quilt Shawl. And so this is where I'm at so far. So each day you knit like this triangle and it's all seamed as you go. You pick up and knit from the previous triangle to make your next one. And I've done six, almost six triangles. I'm halfway through this one. So yeah, I've started this. It's been lovely to work on. I haven't really worked on it this week. I did work on it a bit more during the first week of the year. This is really good TV knitting. Um, and yeah, I just really love how all the colors are playing together. This advent that I'm using was the Nora George 2021 advent. And it's a bit of a fade. So I think it'll look really nice in the calico quilt. I was a little worried that the fade wouldn't work, but so far I'm really liking it. Um, the only modification I am doing with this is you're supposed to increase to 43 stitches and I am increasing to 45. I just, 43 just felt uneven. It is an uneven number. 45 is also an uneven number, but 45 feels more round. You can divide it by five. Um, 43 just like something about that number made me feel a bit uneasy. So I just increased to 45. It just felt better. And yeah, I use probably about half of my mini each day. I have 20 gram minis and like this is how much of one I have left. So I probably have about 10 grams left of each. I'm putting all of my extras into one of my homespun house like cotton drawstring bags. And then this is the color I'm currently working on and this will be the next one. I'm just caking them up on my Swift and ball winder like normal. And yeah, it's pretty mindless. I like to work on it. It's all garter stitch. The hardest thing that you have to keep track of is if you're on a decrease round or not, or an increase round. So like this triangle, I'm decreasing. So one side you increase and the other side you decrease. So the main thing is like, am I increasing or decreasing this round? Which you always do it on the right side. So I have my marker to kind of help me, remind me. And yeah, I'm using fingering weight yarn. It is a 3.75 millimeter, so a US 5. I believe that's the size called for in the pattern. I did not swatch and I did not change my needles. And I'm just really liking it. I don't really know what else to say. I think overall there's 25 different triangles in this shawl. 
and I have 24 minis. So I'm gonna have to see what like the last colors are because I don't remember right now to like do that last <laughs> triangle because I only have 24 mini skeins. But I have a ton of other mini skeins in my stash. I have a ton of mini skeins in general. So I'll probably be able to find something to tie it together. Or I may be able to just repeat a color for that final triangle. So then the last project that I've been working on is <laughs> one that's caused me a little bit of indecision. Um, it's my Cozy Memories blanket. So during my finishing projects, I debated, do I just do these final six squares and call this blanket done because that would make a rectangle? Or do I leave this project on the needles and keep working on it throughout 2023? And I've done these two squares as well, so you might know the answer. I think I'm gonna keep working on it. I still have a ton of minis pulled aside from projects and I realized I don't have to finish it right now. I recounted and with these six, I had 44 or 45 different colors pulled aside from other projects to add to this blanket. And 45 squares wouldn't be enough to finish this blanket. So even if I caught up with adding in those colors, this blanket still isn't gonna be done. So my goal for this year for my cozy memories is I would like to catch up. And by that, I mean, I have projects that I finished with the fingering weight yarn that haven't been put in here. Some of them I've pulled out little skeins, I think usually five to eight grams, put them in this little bag from Join the Stitches, which is then living in this basket. There's many inceptions to this project. So I have some pulled aside and then I have some full skeins that I need to put in as well. So my goal is to add those colors in, but if I finish a project that uses finger weight yarn, I'm going to put that scrap in the weekend that I finish or the weekend after I finish before I put that yarn into my scrap bin because then I will know it's been used. So that's kind of the goal. So like the week that I finish my Desert Vista Dye Works Unicorn Frappuccino socks, I will be putting that square in here. For a while I was trying to do them in order of like when I finished projects. I like would go through my Ravelry projects, see which color would be next and I'd add it in and I have just abandoned that. Like that's too much effort. Now I just grab randomly and I think what gets me is I just really like how it looks. I think it'll be a really nice blanket. And the goal I've kind of set myself is every weekend day, I try to do one square. So basically it's like two squares a weekend. Now on Friday, I added a square. Yesterday I did two and today I've done one. So I've already a little ahead of my goal. And then in my journal, I'm tracking how many squares I do in a month. So that way I can kind of look back at the end of the year, see how many project or how many squares I did each month to kind of keep me motivated. And I, I don't know, it's fun looking back at some of these squares. So like this one was my Temple Bar Desert Vista Dye Works colorway. And I knit those socks when we were in Ireland. This was some Knit Picks Felici for Shane. I think I knit those socks for him when we were in London. This was the mini from my summer sock camp socks. So some of them have a little stronger memories than others. I just, this was one of my favorite colorways of socks I knit. And yeah, it's just fun to look back on. So it's fun pulling out those little scraps and putting them in here. So yeah, that is my cozy memories blanket. It's just bringing me more joy than I thought. And so I didn't want it to be done. I am using every fingering weight yarn scrap that I have, unless it's not superwash. I am trying to just use superwash scraps in this blanket because 
I have a feeling it's gonna end up in the wash. I think so far they've all been super wash. There might, there's about maybe one or two that I'm not 100% sure if they are. So if they felt, they felt. If not, it's fine. And there's definitely, like, my squares are not all the same size. Some are bigger than others, some are much smaller. My gauge is definitely changing throughout and they don't line up perfectly, but I think it's all fine. It's eclectic. And honestly, I've like laid it out here. That's what I keep looking at. And it's bigger than I thought. It's a pretty good size right now. It's definitely nowhere close to being done, but it is just nice. And it's been nice to just work on a square in the mornings or on the weekends as I go. I did end up buying some signature needle arts needles. Um, I got the stiletto tips with the, I think this is the teardrop. I'm using three millimeter needles. I was using DPNs, like two of them, but I always had to be really careful to not knock my stitches off the other side. And then I was using like a circular needle. But the cord really just bothered me. So I just really needed some straight needles. And since I've decided like this is a long-term project and it's one I'm excited about and then a lot of memories are going into, I thought just like a nice pair of needles to go with them would be nice. And it's been very enjoyable to work on with these needles. But actually I had a struggle finding some three millimeter needles that weren't like 10 inches. Like I just needed seven inches and I wanted metal and I've heard good things about these so I wanted to try them. So I do like these and it's been lovely to work on and I'm excited to keep going on this project. I don't know when it will be done. I think I'll just know when I'm done with the project. I do have some other projects that I am super excited to start very soon. I'm trying to focus on what I have, but I just want to sh tell you some of the things that are in my brain that I think I might cast on soon. So I'm going to be making a headband for Shane's mom. I'm going to be using a Merino Yak silk blend for that. I'm pretty excited. I found this really cute headband with a twist and it's just like stockinette. I don't remember the name, but I'm sure I'll post a picture here. And I'm pretty excited to start that pattern. I also want to start another muscle burra or a fourth hat. I have some fingering weight non-superwash yarn that I am testing out. And I don't know which of those two patterns I'm going to do yet. The nice thing is they both are in any gauge, start from the crown pattern by Zolda Teague. So I might just cast on and start some increases and see how I go and then decide. But I do want to make a hat for that. And then the last thing I'm super excited about is I am going to start an easy V here soon. Now an easy V is not a sweater that was uh, in my Q video, that in my 11 sweaters that I want to knit this year. But I saw Stacy's easy V that she finished from Stress Knits. And I knew I had to start this sweater. I have this dark chocolate brown merino in my stash. And one night I couldn't sleep and I just thought about my alternating skein colors that I wanted for an easy V. And I scrolled through project page after project page after project page. And I was like, maybe I can do a solid, maybe I can pull from my stash. I decided I was gonna pull some yarn from my stash and then I don't have the yardage. <laughs> I do not have the yardage for the yarn I thought I was going to use. And then I was like, this is a sign that I should use the spin cycle. So I bought some Dream State. I'm super excited about the colors that I've picked. I'm not going to share it here right now. I'm probably going to share a little bit about it with my Patreons this week on my knit and chat. I'm excited to show that to them, but then I will show it to you guys probably on my yarn stash update for January. And I'll obviously show you once I start swatching for it. I'm super excited. It, I think it's going to look lovely. So part of me really wants to go ahead and start but I know I probably should only have one sweater on the needles, but everyone else has two multiple sweaters going at a time. And I don't know if I'm that person. Am I that person? Can I have two sweaters going at one time or do I just need one sweater? Um, let me know. Do you knit more than one sweater at a time? 
the thing is is now my forager is like just stocking it in the round we got stocking it sleeves and we got stocking it body so like maybe I could go ahead and start my easy V I'm so excited and I don't want to lose the momentum that I have for it so we'll see <laughs> I'm sure it'll start pretty soon. If not, I'm definitely, I'm at least swatching here pretty soon. But this is a natural merino yarn that I got in Germany. It's just like a chocolate brown. And then I have Dream State for the contrast colors. I'm pretty excited about it. But yeah, that's basically all of the knitting I have. I did want to share a little bit about some of the books I've been reading recently. I'm trying to get back into reading. I used to be a big reader as a kid. And since I've picked up knitting, I don't read as much, but I'm trying to do more audiobooks and, you know, sharing with you all helps keep me accountable. So I figured I would share. So the first book I've been reading, I've been waiting to read this book for a long time. I watch some people that do booktube and one YouTuber that I watch, Allison Pages, has recommended this book so much and it wasn't available in the US but now it is and so I'm reading Lonely Castle in the Mirror which is translated and it's by Muzoki, Mizuki Tijimura. I don't know how to say that. I'm reading this on my Kindle so that's why I can show you the screen. It's about a girl who is struggling to go to school. She has not been going to traditional schools and so her family has moved her to like a non-traditional school for students who are struggling with just going to school in general. It's based in Japan but she still hasn't gone to this new school but she realizes her mirror in her bedroom like takes her to this alternate reality where it's this castle where all these kids can go. There's about I think there's eight of the kids and they're also like not going to school they're struggling in the castle there's a challenge to like find a key which will grant you a wish and that's basically as far as I am I'm just really enjoying it I could definitely relate to I never struggled to go to school as a kid but I can relate to the like uneasy feeling of like being around classmates and stuff like that so I'm just really resonating with the main character in this book and it's been pretty fun to read especially since it's translated and it's just it's just really fun it's just a good book so far and I'm excited to keep diving more into it I'm only 18% of the way in so I really don't think I've spoiled anything for you I think I've read there are longer chapters but I've read two of the chapters so far and I'm excited to delve more into it the other book I'm reading I'm actually I'm listening to this on the Libby app and so this is called The Starless Sea. It's by Erin Morgenstern who wrote The Night Circus if you ever read that book and I'm four percent of the way into this book. I've listened to 45 minutes. Um, I don't really know what's happening. All I've gathered so far is it's like we've heard some of these like you know when they talk about like storytelling in like stories that are passed down from generation to generation. I feel like we've heard two of those kind of stories, like stories that are retold. And then we're at a point where like, it's like an inception of the book where the character in the book found a book with these stories that we have now heard. And he then gets to the story about him finding the book that we're just now listening to him finding. So I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> like I said, I'm only 4% of the way through, but we just hit like, we were like, here are these two like long lost stories. And then here's this main timeline character who found the stories and read the stories that we just listened to. And then he reads the story about himself finding the book. Crazy, I don't know what's happening. I've been listening to that. I started spinning some of my roving. So I've been listening to that while spinning. Obviously I've only done 45 minutes of spinning because I'm only 45 of the minutes through. <laughs> but yeah, those are kind of what I'm listening to, what I'm reading and I'm trying to do some more book consumption this year. I definitely, like I listen to a ton of podcasts, but something about delving into a book is really nice. And I, realize audiobooks are really 
as much as like I like the look and idea of reading a physical book, I prioritize my knitting and so I won't stop knitting to read a physical book unless it's on my Kindle and I may be able to knit and read but I'm not really like I can knit and watch a movie but I don't really enjoy knitting and reading at the same time. I don't know I like knit really slow or I read really slow or I do both very slow so I feel like I'm not being effective with any of my time. But listening to an audiobook I can just knit and listen. So trying to do a little bit more of that. I'm trying to like stop watching TV earlier in the evening and then listening to my book while knitting instead of watching TV. So we'll see. If you're listening or reading anything good, let me know. I'd love more recommendations. I usually listen to fiction, some type of fantasy or thriller. Honestly, I like all kind of fiction. I don't know. I can't really describe what kind of fiction I like. I just like the books that have interesting ideas. Dystopian things, thrillers, fantasy. I do like character studies as well, so if it's just like following someone. Those I definitely find easier with audiobooks, but anyway, I'll stop rambling about books now. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and seeing a little update of what I've been working on. Please feel free to like this video. It helps us connect with other knitters and subscribe if you would like to not miss my future uploads. Also, if you missed it, I started a Patreon where I share some blog posts and we have some extra community building events as well, knit and chats and some virtual knit nights as well. So if you'd like to join, feel free to find that link down below in the description box. And to my Patreons, thank you so much for joining on this adventure with me. And thank you guys for watching this video as well. I couldn't do this if you guys didn't watch. I love you for spending a little bit of time with me today. Thank you for clicking, thank you for watching, and thank you for your time. I hope you put a little bit of love in every stitch you're making today, and I will see you guys again very soon.